Gatewood Galbraith, come on up here, my brother man, all the way from Kentucky. To tell you some truth, this guy's been doing this longer than Hempfest has been doing this. Give him some warm love. Thank you very much, friend. Hey, thank you all. Listen, I hope you all remember that the theme of this Hempfest is this one's for you, Jack. This one is for Jack Hare. For a lot of you young folks out there, if it wasn't for Jack Hare, you wouldn't be here at this Hempfest because there wouldn't be a Hempfest. Jack Hare is responsible for it. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to pay tribute to my friend Jack Hare, who passed this past several months ago. Here's my tribute to him. Jack Hare is a social and philosophical tsunami. The ripples from whose splash will forever grace the shores of human consciousness in every freedom-loving nation. He is a grand champion of we the people and the natural cycle in our battle with the synthetic subversion which threatens the very concept of the sovereignty of each human individual. Jack's tireless efforts to eliminate the facts about cannabis have furnished freedom fighters everywhere with the tools of knowledge with which to resist the fascism of the corporate state as it seeks to subject everyone to its economic bottom line. Yeah! Jack recognized that cannabis is a gateway to existentialism, which enlightens our existence and is the basis of our freedom of choice. Yes. He also recognized the miraculous healing powers of this herb, and many sick and dying people have found comfort in its use after reading his wonderful manifesto, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. I am one of them. Jack Hare's grand spirit may have left his worn out body, but he has entered into the hearts and minds of millions of us who will forever be grateful to have been educated by his commitment to the truth. God bless you, Jack Hare. Hey, hey. Hey. The message that Jack and I have is that your younger generation are open to perils to which he and I never had to conceive. That there is a great move afoot to take you out of the property of sovereign human beings yeah! and put you into the property of the man. The man. The petrochemical, yeah! pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, fascist, elite, son of a bitches. Yeah! You see the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as impediments to the implementation of their new world order and global economy. And they are not warm and fuzzy about you or me or our children or grandchildren. And they are, are afraid to give everybody in the rest of the world due process and constitutional rights. So in order to make it one world, they're going to take ours away. And the question of him, the question of cannabis, is the most vivid illustration of how this government has overstepped its bounds in policing the private behavior of citizens. When they told us we couldn't plant a hip seed in the ground, they severed us from the natural cycle. That is what they seek to do. I call it the synthetic subversion, where they want to replace all the natural products on earth that used to be grown out of God's earth and God's seed, and replace them with synthetic products and knocked our farmer out of the agrarian society and the agrarian market and made the ghost towns of our small cities and villages across this country. We need to rediscover a cash crop, yes. one that will allow our farmers to go back to the land, one that will allow our farmers to compete with the petrochemical pipelines. You plant U.S. 7% agricultural land in hemp, you wouldn't have to import another drop of oil. We can replace the spills in the Gulf. We can replace the uh, environmental catastrophe that the petroleum pipelines have cast upon Mother Earth and instead let our farmers grow hemp as a fuel crop. Finally. In 1991, Willie Nelson and I poured hemp oil into my Mercedes diesel and drove it across Kentucky in my bed for governor. That's why he started his biofuel plan. Listen, folks, you all have been handed a, a, a torch. Jack Hare, bless his soul, passed away. I'm getting old up here. You know, we cannot make carry this ball much longer. You have to become educated. You have to learn the truth. You have to reach out there and grab the responsibility of maintaining your freedom. Every generation must rewin its own freedoms. And those very sacrifices 
right up to the very last second I've been talking to you, made on your behalf, cannot continue anymore. What really counts is your all's commitment to what sacrifices you're willing to make in the future to maintain your freedom. And it's right there in front of you. I encourage you, I encourage you to learn the law. I encourage you to learn the political process. I encourage you to reach out there and take responsibility for your own freedom, live your life like a warrior. God bless you all. Thanks for having me out here in Seattle.